So layering on this concept of energy systems is the natural next question. Is there a right thing to work on within these energy systems? Clearly breath work, right? So we can say within this category, So within this category, and again, we're not only doing this thing, we're doing a cycle, but these are sort of the critical things we're trying to take care of. First thing we want to sort of do, we want to activate, because the respiratory system is strong, our lungs or breath work, which we talked about, right? So a lot of breathing or breath work in Qigong, we can do that. In yoga, you would do that. And these are some traditions that people do early in the morning or, or first, or when they get up and start moving. And then also ankles, when we sleep in the positions we're in, sort of all of our blood pools back to our organs, which is excellent, it's how we recover. And then as we wake up, we have to get that second pump going, which is sort of at the ankle complex. And so one of the things we wanna make sure we're doing is sort of working, and we do and we take care of this, is we work through the foot and ankle and the lungs. So that's sort of pulling the breath work in and starting the circulation activation of it, right? And this makes all the other things easier. Then as we move into sort of the second, what I call day pull, right, or check-in, we, we, we don't do anything with digestive, that's recovery-based, we're eating, we're recovering. But then from a physical perspective, so we go from lungs and ankles, first sort of check-in or day pull, then sort of the mid-morning one, our cardiovascular system is starting to, re starting to rev up a little bit later. So we want to activate that as we've done ankles and gotten, we're gonna work our way up. So now ankles, now we're gonna go to sort of around the knee. Doesn't mean working on the knees necessarily, but like the muscles above and below the knee. So a lot of times it's in, as you're gonna see in the videos, it's our swimming dragon series, it's our warm up. it's moving through the knees and strengthening the legs in those standing postures or moving postures will really give us that energy rise up that we need to be able to make it through the rest of the day. Now, if we do too much, we'll feel exhausted and need to recover, which is okay if you're an athlete in training and you have the rest of the afternoon to recover. But if we're going into other activities, we're gonna do this sort of to a, a level one, two, three, you know, one of those in there. We're gonna build up sort of our strength around our knees. Again, using like the swimming dragon technique, which we're gonna see in the day pulls, using our activation warm-ups, even sled drags and things like that if you wanna do that. But strengthening the muscles in and around the knees. So we go, just thinking from a physical perspective, we're going from our ankles and getting that blood circulating and flowing, then into the knees, so now a little bit higher, and then we're gonna keep going. So by this time, sort of third check-in of the day, our cardiovascular system is up and waving and our endocrine system is what we're gonna take advantage of, which is for us the hormones and just stretching. When we get a nice deep stretch, we get a hormone release and nice reset, right? But it's hard to do first thing in the morning. It does not feel good to do some stretches right away, right? There's a million reasons for that, but it doesn't matter. But by the time we get here and we've done these check-ins, now we can do sort of this flexibility of our endocrine system through our hips and waist. So we can do our stretching and especially we've gone and we've warmed up our ankles and our feet, strengthened our ankles and feet, then our knees in and around the knees and now up to our hips and waist. So anything from when you're going to see all the day pulls of check-ins, but this is the time where we sort of work on getting to move better through our hips and waist specifically. Okay. Then we're gonna move on. Then as we move in to sort of the fourth check-in, 
our nervous system's energy is starting to kick in from three to seven, right? So now if we sort of loosened up our ankles and feet, got them strong and going with the breath work, got our knees sort of warmed up, which starts our cardiovascular system going, which kicks in. Then we're nice and warmed up at peak cardiovascular time so we can stretch our endocrine system, flexibility, hips and waist. Now as we get here into this next phase, there is a noticeable shift from here right to here. Our, our strength is our high, starting to get our highest from three to seven, right? So our upper body and torso naturally kick in, right? We do a lot of upper torso stuff. So this is sort of mid torso, hips and waist right here and here, right? That's lower torso or just, we would just call it torso. And then sort of the upper part of the torso is the, the back, the upper back, the chest. So this is just natural stuff that you'd see people go to the gym doing. We could put, there's a, we'll cover that. But there's a lot of individual preference in that, but just see the opposite, right? So if we woke up and tried to do upper torso strength training right away, which I've had to do in the past with sports and different things, it's okay after, but you're definitely not your strongest. <laughs> you're, 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 you know, the same weights that you were doing here, don't even try here, right? You're, you're doing a fraction of that. So this is an ideal time when everything else is sort of warmed up and going and our strength is good, that we sort of strengthen our upper body, um, and, and it just makes sense, right? As everything just fills in, that's the ideal time to fill that in if that's what you're gonna do. And then as we sort of move into the later evening, or not really later evening, but a little bit more, and these, I like to combine these sometimes too, the arm lines. So as we, you see the energy we've gone from ankles to knees, to hips and waist, to upper torso, and now from the neck and the arm line out. And so um, again, like traditional high school boys or just anybody in the gym these days, that's a great, that's when the arms feel the easiest to sort of, they feel most loosened up and easiest to train. Um, but again, it was all sports, right? Baseball, football, throwing. Um, for us with five-year-old right now, a lot of um, throwing things in the afternoon, climbing, right? Jungle gym, um, rock climbing, American Ninja Warrior type stuff, right? So this is the time where it's easiest to do this. And to, like think hanging, if we're swinging off monkey bars and hanging, try to do that first thing in the morning or early, it's, sorry, try to do that first thing in the morning or early, that's tough to do. As we've gone from feet and ankles, to knees, to hips and waist, to upper torso, we've worked all the way up to the neck and arm line, we've loosened up to those areas, it's the easiest to hang and swing. So we would go, we used to go rock climbing a lot after work in school at that time. And that's when you see all the best rock climbers. If you go into the weight room, that's when you see all the strongest guys arm wise, you know, biggest arm guys. If you see sports, that's when pitchers are pitching. They're not pitching or football throwers aren't throwing this early in the day, right? They're doing it when it's the ideal energy. And a lot of times you're not going to do both of these separate. And so what we're going to do in that case is we're going to pick one of these two times and put them together and then just use sort of the other one as a check-in in not getting too far behind, right? Because we're really probably not gonna do this and then three hours later or so do arm lines unless you have kids or you're doing different activities. So we can combine those and leave the other one available, which we'll see in the templates for water and a basic thing like our daily dozen, which takes five or 10 minutes. Um, but that's sort of the map that we're following. And then as we go into the last phase, we sort of move into our head. So for our training perspective, we're sort of met it. And here when the head is most active, I mean, sort of like we've talked about, expansive thinking, um, dreaming, meditating, right? Before bed, healing sounds, re energy has moved up to our head. It's gone sort of as we will, we sleep, we're con everything's condensed, center of our body. Hopefully our legs are bent and we're pulled up a little bit in the ideal sort of sleeping positions. And then as we wake up, We've got to pump and strengthen the feet and ankles first, right? If we're just going to talk about that with breath work, then as we get going mid-morning, we're going to start to incorporate a little bit more of a, a lower stance position or moving through whatever is necessary to sort of strengthen around the knees. Then as we get peak heart rate up, we're going to do, we're going to loosen up our hips and our waist because we've already moved through our feet, ankles, and knees. Then as we go later, now we're sort of hitting the second section of the day, right? The first, and now we're starting the second. So our strength is up, whether whatever it is we wanna do 
for upper our upper torso and we can kind of combine that or separate that from our arm lines right our hanging all that stuff and then we move into sort of the recovery so energy builds up 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 feet knees hip and waist torso arm lines and neck and now we're at head right and then we want to bring it back down again so we can use it take advantage of it in, in the cycles we talked about and then healing sounds maybe inner smile orbit something like that bring it that bring the energy back down to bring back to our center of our body which is where we sleep and it condenses in the center more so and then we wake up and we start the process over right and so again rolling allocation these are the check-in points in the beginning we just want to be able to have some check-in points all the time because it gives us stability and balance and continuity. Continuity gives us clues, right? Continuity gives us clues. Continuity gives us clues. So the more we have this continuity, the more we can see now why rolling allocation works because we can't just hammer every single one of these every single day. But we can have check-ins and have rolling allocation so they have more, we might, Monday might be more about strengthening our breath work and ankles and then Tuesday might be just sort of the minimal amount. Same, right? Tuesday might be the peak Monday might just be a warm up for cardiovascular knees, and then on Tuesday it might be like the, the more advanced session of the week as we get as we get better and better and better in this practice. But in the beginning, it's just checking in and getting these points as often as you can to build the continuity. Then with that continuity, we get to start to have a lot of fun and do rolling allocation.